So, oh, got it. Hello, welcome. Um, I'm Marcia. I'm in the Netherlands. It's around eight o'clock in the evening here. Um, this is my studio. I've got all of my Jelly Arts gel plates um, in the back hanging on the wall um, because I'm here on behalf of Jelly Arts. And today we are going to uh, make collage papers and then hopefully create some collages, but we'll see. Um, Debbie, if you want to um, switch over to my table, then everyone can see that I've got um, a, a gel printing plate here, and this is the eight by 10 Jelly Arts gel printing plate. It's, it's this one, this is the packaging it comes in. And uh, for this class, it doesn't matter what um, size of gel plate you have. If you have this one, this is the five by seven that's also available at Michael's, then that's fine. Um, it will both work. Um, so uh, a gel printing plate is made of a special kind of plastic. It's squishy. Um, and what else can I tell you about it? It's really fun to use. What else do I have on my table? I have a brayer. I need a brayer. This is a Speedball Deluxe brayer that I really like. Um, I've, I've got some scrap paper here. I've got some, well, actually I've got lots of paper here. Um, I've got um, computer paper to print on. This is some um, pattern making paper that you use for sewing. I've got some notebook paper or book paper. I've got some paper bags, like a type of glassine bags and just normal paper, thin paper bags. I will show them when I'm going to print. I also got some deli paper, which is really nice and some wax paper some parchment paper. This is actually from Jelly Arts, just so you know. I've also got some rice paper that we can try. And then I've got my favorite and that's tissue paper. And I've not only got um, white tissue paper, but also like colored, all kinds of colors. Um, and even one that I like recycled and already printed on. Um, so the tissue paper that I, I um, use is the kind that you find in gift wrap, uh, the gift wrap department, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, that's the, the paper I'm using. And then I also have some cards here. Um, these are the um, recollections four and a half by six and a half inches um, sheets um, of cardstock paper. Um, and I'm only going to use them to glue my collage uh, paper on. So you can use any um, other paper that you have. It just needs to be a little bit sturdier than computer paper. Um, and I'm going to use it as a base. Um, and um, I've already like, this is the, the four and a half by uh, six and a half inch card. And I already cut it to size because I will be eventually pasting it into this little um, watercolor zigzag album. And this one is by, um, yeah, okay. I say Hanemüller, um, which is the German way to say, but I think you will say Hanemüller, something like that. Um, 
they have really nice uh, little books and this is watercolor paper, um, but I won't be using any watercolor on it. I will just be um, pasting these pieces of card in, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, um, I've also got some paint here and I will try and remember to tell you um, the color and the brands that I'm using when I'm using it. And I've also um, so have something that's actually quite important. Um, I've also got some glue here. This is Liquitex Matte Medium. That's what I use for gluing my collage. Um, and I will tell you about some alternatives when we get to gluing. So let's get started, right? Um, I'll just pick a paint. And this is um, a Liquitex Basics Rose Pink. And let's get started with just computer paper. Um, yeah. So for gel printing, you only need one drop, uh, one drop of paint that is usually enough. And then you roll it out with the brayer. And I know you can't see it, but I'm rolling the brayer, picking it up, rolling the brayer, picking it up. So that's the motion. And then I'm rolling the excess paint off um, on my scrap paper. And then you can use some kind of texture tool. And I know I didn't show them to you yet, but they are off to the side. Um, and this is bubble wrap. And you can use that to create a nice pattern like this. And then I will print it onto the copy paper. And this is just regular copy paper, nothing special. And there we go. There's a first sheet that we can use for collage. Um, I think we can use a little bit more here. So I'm going to take another color and I'm not going to clean the plate. There's not much paint in here, I think. Let's see. This is Deco Art Americana and it's the color Indian Turquoise. Let's roll that out. Clean my brayer and then I will just place my paper on here. And then maybe I can take another sheet and put it on there. So for collage paper, I really like it when there's some crunch going on. So there's some texture that was left on the plate and some uh, specks of paint that were there from even before um, we started. Um, and that's what I like. So here we go. See, there's something going on here. I don't know what it is, but it was on my plate before. So in short, I do not clean my plates in between. However, if you need to clean your plates, you can just wipe it with a damp cloth. This is a microfiber cloth. Or you can use a baby wipe. That is usually enough for when it's just um, paint on the plate. 
um, yeah, let's get another. Let's see. So for collage, I um, usually uh, don't put a whole lot of pattern on there because I need um, paper with texture, but not a whole lot of pattern, if that makes sense. Um, because I'm when I'm creating a collage, I'm usually looking for colors and not uh, necessarily patterns. Um, I also like it when it's just a plain color, so we can do that. This is DecoArt Americana Teal Mint. And then maybe I can mix it with a little bit of this. This is Folk Art Color Shift Emerald Flash. Pulling it out. And then this is a really light um, color, but hopefully it will show up. So I'm creating a kind of ombre effect. And let's take one more sheet of copy paper. And also, as you can see, I'm not rolling the paint out. Um, um, I don't cover the whole plate. Um, you can, but it's not always necessary. And if you don't, then you get these interesting bits on the sides. Um, I will show you the difference. Let's get some blue paint. This is Windsor and Newton Galleria, a cerulean blue U. And I will roll it out. All over the plate. And let's get the bubble wrap again. Yeah, that's what I was hoping for. Sometimes the paint on the bubble wrap is still a little bit wet and then it transfers onto the plate. Okay, one more sheet of copy paper. I still got some really nice corners here. Um, but yeah, I, do, I usually don't need this much collage paper. So I rather just print like this, like that I have some pieces I can choose from, or I can even use like a little bit of the pink and then a little bit of the blue which will make sense when we get to gluing. So that's copy paper. And now let's try rice paper because I have it here. So I have different kinds and I don't know any of the brands. This is parchment. Um, but what I do know is that most times it has a rough side, like a little bit of a texture side and a smooth side. Um, and I like to print on the smooth side. And with rice paper, you need to make sure that it doesn't get um, really wet or that your paint is too dry. If the, if the print is really wet, then you can 
uh, get then the paper might get too wet and then it could tear. Or if the paint on the plate is too dry, then the paper might get stuck on the plate and it will tear too. So let's see how I do that. Well, not tear the tearing part, but the printing part. Let's take some yellow. And again, I'm not cleaning the plates in between because I'm looking for a little bit of unexpected um, texture. And I think there is still enough going on on the plate. So let's put this on here. And then I don't leave it on there too long. So there we go. Some really nice bubble wrap texture. And it also lo looks more green than yellow, I think. But that's nice. Um, we can do another piece of rice paper. Are there any questions so far? No, we're just enjoying watching you. <laughs> okay, then I'll just continue. Um, this is, uh, oh, by the way, this was Process Yellow from Windsor and Newton Galleria. And this is Prussian Blue U, also from Windsor and Newton Galleria. And let's move on from the bubble wrap. Let's try something else. Because I have, I have some feathers here that I pulled apart a little bit because I think it makes them more interesting. And now, going hey, to Marcia, the, we have yeah. our first question. Yes. Sir, are the Galleria's paints a heavy bodied paint? Yeah, well, that's an interesting question. Um, um, uh, I don't know what they say themselves, but I would um, classify them as a medium body paint. So they're not as fluid as maybe a soft body by Liquitex, um, but they are not. I'm, I, when I think of heavy body, I think more of the, the golden um, professional paints or the Liquitex heavy body paints. Um, these are the paints that look like oil paints. They are like kind of stiff and if you, use them with, um, uh, with a brush, you get peaks. And those are not the kinds of paints that I like to use on the gel print, printing plate. So I like medium body paints, which I, I call this medium body paints um, or soft body paints. Anyway, this is my print. And then it might actually be, maybe I can try that. If I can pull this on top of there, let's see if I can pull that off. And I know you can't see it, but I'm kind of lining up the edges of this print with the edges of the paint underneath. But I don't know if I talk too long and it won't transfer. But we'll see. Ah, okay. <laughs> that did not go right, but that's okay because I won't be using this um, whole print. I will only be using small bits. And um, for the small bits, there are really interesting things going on here. Really nice textures. And then 
Um, what am I going to do with this? Mm, let's leave that on there. And let's try another color. What color? Red? No. Oh, wait a minute. Let's take this blue one again. This is the lighter blue. And now I'm not going to pay attention to the, um, the feathers that are on there, but I'm just going to take some yarn. This is eyelash yarn. Let's see. And maybe I can put that on here. There we go. This looks really nice. So as you can see, I'm keeping it really, really simple. I'm not making any complicated um, designs or um, because I know that I'm going to um, use only small pieces of these prints. I love that. That is amazing. Um, yeah, let's move on to tissue, oh, tissue paper. Yeah, let's move on to tissue paper. So tissue paper is one of my favorite thin papers to um, print on. And let's take this one. This is pale olive. And what's nice about tissue paper is that when you um, use a light colored tissue paper to print on, then when you glue it down, you it will kind of um, blend into the background that you are printing it on. I've got this doily that makes a really nice pattern. I'm going to use this to take some of the paint off. And now when I lift it, I know it must be hard to see, but if I place the tissue paper on here and hopefully, I'm using this one, this blue tissue paper because I don't want to get paint all over my hands. So there we go. I don't know if you can see what's going on here, but there's a lot of a lot of texture. I still can see some of the feathers here and some of the eyelash yarn. And here, maybe I should put something white underneath. Look, this helps a lot. And you can see the texture that the doily made. See how interesting that looks? Well, at least I think it's interesting. And then when you glue that on top of something else, like something dark, then the pattern will show up, which I will show 
um, later. Let's see. Okay, I need to switch to a metallic color. This is Deco Art Dazzling Metallics Shimmering Silver because it's also fun to um, print on a dark colored tissue paper like this dark blue with a metallic. The metallic won't show up really well when you print on white tissue paper, but if you use dark tissue paper, well, let's, what am I going to use? So I've got this plastic, like a, it was a, a, a plastic tablecloth that I once found. I can push it. Now I'm again using this blue tissue paper to get some of the paint out of the um, crevices of the tablecloth. And that makes a nice pattern on here. But then if I lift this up, mm, hopefully it was enough, but we'll see. And I place this dark blue tissue paper on top. And I pull the prints with the ads. Can you see the shine? I think you can. That is really cool to use. Um, so what else have I got? I still have the... Um, oh, I can't find it anymore. So yeah, I, uh, I still got the wax paper, which is really fun also to use with um, there's still some paint on there. Also to use with a metallic. So let's see what I can do with this. Decorate Extreme Sheen Pewter. And maybe this time I can use some of this. Got some leaves here that I already used to print with. Oh. And let's get this right here. And now I want of paper, yes. So sometimes I cover um, the plate and the paper with another sheet of paper just to um, be able to apply more pressure without uh, getting paint all over my hands, which doesn't always help because there's still paint. But So this is again hard to see. If I put something underneath, then you will see that there's something going on here. And perhaps it could be cool to add some gold. And maybe just some punchinella.
Add a little bit in here. See, that can happen. So this is really, really subtle. But if you put something light under there, well, then it's still subtle. Doesn't matter. Um, yeah, I still need something red. So I will do something red and then we will start um, pasting, I think. This is interesting because the color is getting really light. I wonder if the silver is still kind of wet. Um, oh, this is a really cool one. This is some twine. And let's just get this deli paper. Mm, no, I'm going to use another sheet of um, tissue paper. You are all really quiet. They are so quiet. <laughs> I think we're all waking up from Thanksgiving. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, that makes sense. We're chilling watching you create. It's super fun. This is already pretty cool. But then if I take another sheet of tissue paper. Oh. I remove this. See, this is what I really think is really cool. Oh. Actually, that's also something really fun. There's a, a crease in here now that I did not intend to be there, but that's okay. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a lot of detail in here. Um, yeah, one more. So um, um, this, maybe this. Well, maybe let's take the Prussian blue view again. Hey, Marsha, it's yeah. so funny you said just one more. Because no, I know, I know, but I, I, I <laughs> crumpled up the paper a little bit, um, and that usually gives a really nice effect. Um, okay, but we can't wait to see what you do with all these papers. I know, I know, I know. This will be the the last one. I promise. So. Like, look at this. I love that. And then of course you can pull a print from this too, but I promised it would be the last print. So um, do you still want me to do this one? Why not? <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, I, I will say this, I almost said the blue one is so beautiful. It was worth the wait. <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah. But it's hard to stop when, once you are um, printing. There's right. always more. That's why you never, um, you always have to take some time to print because once you are going, then there will be more and more ideas for other prints mm -hmm. and stuff to try, so. Mm -hmm. I hope that was worth it. I think it was. So, 
Here we go. And this is why I like to not clean my plates in between because otherwise I would not have this kind of texture in the print because there's silver in there. There's, I can still see Punchinella. There's still some um, part of the uh, twine in there. Like here, you can also see the, the um, corner of, I don't know. Um, but let's set this aside. So when I store my uh, gel printing plate, I um, uh, sandwich it. So I clean it first before I uh, put it back into the clamshell. Um, and I cover it with um, a sheet of copy paper like this. I do not put the mylar sheets back on. Um, I just um, sandwich it in between paper and then I put it back into the clamshell. Um, so yeah. So again, I cut my paper down to match um, my book. Um, and I have no idea what the um, measurements are, but it doesn't matter because um, you can adapt it to uh, whatever you are going to use. So if you want to make cards, then um, think about the size of your uh, folded card and then cut this piece of paper that you are going to collage on um, to a size that fits the card. So this one, for me, I like a little uh, white border. So this one needs to be um, slightly smaller. Um, that's what I would do anyway. But I cut, I cut these to fit in here also with a white border. And then I can actually measure what the size of this pages is the pages are well that's just a sliver over four inches and yeah a little bit over five and three quarters and then these are just slightly smaller um and then what I need is I'm going to take my parchment paper and let's see. So what I can do is I I like to um, uh, make these little vignettes, landscapes, um, but I also like something really random like this um, or something like um, um, a little bit more um, yeah I don't know <laughs> what to call this but uh, shapes or sometimes oh, abstract. I, yeah, abstract. abstract yeah or you can do something like this which was inspired by um, some of the home decor at Michael's that I found on the website. I think it was it was Christmas um, Christmas decor. So what I use to okay, um, so I like why so I didn't explain why I like thin papers to uh, print. Uh, on for collage. The reason is that it's easier to cut. So if you want to cut shapes, like maybe a leaf or something, let's see if I can do that. And it's much easier to cut really small 
bits. And then of course, now I'm using larger scissors than I would normally do because most times I like to use fine tip um, scissors, like, um, I don't know. And there, hopefully. Okay, this is not the best leaf ever, but let's do that. Let's. Cut it a little bit smaller, like this. So this is much easier to do than if you have something like cardstock. Here I've got some um, scrapbooking paper that I printed on with gold, but it's, it's uh, much harder to um, cut a leaf like this out of this um, cardstock which doesn't mean that you can't use it for collage. If you have paper that is a little bit heavier um, and you want to use it for collage, that's okay. Um, what I usually do is, let's see. You can spray it. This is um, a bottle of water. You can spray it. And then it's usually um, easier to, um, um, yeah, adhere. And what I've got here is there's already matte medium in here, but I love to use matte medium. However, and we'll, we'll try this first. However, for um, heavier paper, it could be handier to use a gel medium. Marsha, somebody yeah. asked for the heavier paper. Could you yeah. cut it with the size, size six dies, do die cutting? I, yes. Yeah. Why not? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, I don't know what um, weight paper this is, um, but um, it shouldn't be a problem at all. It's not that, it's not super heavy cardstock. It's just normal scrapbook paper. Um, so yeah, that, that is now adhered, but it's still super wet. Um, but what I wanted to say is like, oh yeah, for heavier papers, sometimes it, it can be um, harder to stuck down, stick down. And then what I would use is like a, a gel medium. And that's, that looks like this, right? Not fluid, but it's like paste. So if you are having trouble sticking your paper down on the paper, um, on your paper base, then you could try the gel medium instead of the matte medium. Or another thing I like to use is just um, a glue stick, but you need to make sure that it's a good glue stick, not um, like a school glue or something like that, um, the permanent stick, if that makes sense. I hope it does. Um, but Someone thanks. just asked about gesso. Yeah. Could you use gesso? Um, I, ne I never use gesso as, um, as an adhesive. Um, I never need to because I have plenty of matte medium. 
um, but uh, technically I think it will stick. So here you can see that I um, uh, tore that part where there's blue and pink. And maybe I can put that on there. So this is what I do with the matte medium. I paste it on my, I brush it on my base and then I put my paper on top and then I usually go over it with the gel medium again. However, I'm going to run into trouble now and I will show you because if I put the matte medium, because it's matte, it's not glossy. If I put it over the metallic, I will take away some of the shine. I don't know if you can see that. You can see, this is where I put the matte medium and this is the metallic paint. So if you can help it, do not put matte medium over any metallic parts. Um, so I'm just going to do the entire thing now because I'm afraid that it will show up once the gel medium is dry, the matte medium is dry. Hey, Marsha, somebody's yeah. saying that they, when they print on copy paper, it yeah. curls, right? And yeah. So they want to know, do you do anything with the curl paper before you do this? Before you No, I don't. No, I, it usually um, flattens. Um, I think that's also part of why I put glue underneath and over top because then it's wet on both sides of the paper and then it gets a chance to, if you, if you put um, something wet on one side of the paper, then that's when you get the buckling. And when you are gel printing, you are only putting paint on one side of the paper. And if it's, it's really wet paint, so if it's like kind of dry paint, then it's usually not a problem because it's only a super thin layer and it's, uh, dry almost instantly. However, if it's wet paint, yeah, then you will get buckling. But it's okay if you if you glue it down, then um, it usually will uh, uh, flatten. And now I still have some here that I I do have some. like kind of bubbles here, but I can flatten that. And also, I don't know if you can see that. If the print is still super fresh, then you can have some um, bleeding because I'm, uh, I'm, I did not give it enough time to dry the paint. I know it feels dry, but sometimes it's it can still um, bleed a little bit. But as I said, um, if you wait a day or a week, then this won't be, um, the, then it won't be like this. I don't know if, you, if that makes sense. But usually if you put more um, paper on top, then you won't notice it anymore. So I'm tearing this. However, let's say, oh yeah, let's just put that on here. I'm not really thinking about this. I'm just <laughs> gluing some stuff down. See, this is here. This is what happens with heavier paper. Sometimes the glue just um, 
absorbs into the paper and then you have trouble st sticking it down. But that's okay. So if that happens to you, just use it heavier gel medium. So just to be clear, this is the matte medium. This is matte gel medium. And then use that to stick it down or use the glue stick, but then the paper needs to be dry. Oh, I hope I didn't stick it down. Yeah, I did. Now I transferred part of this print onto here, but that's okay. I can put something else over top. Let's see. I... This? No. So, Marsha, not yeah. to add any pressure, <laughs> but you have five minutes. Oh, okay. So, I will show you one more thing because that's what I wanted to show you. Let's take this print. Oh, no. Let's, let's do this quick. So what I was starting to tell you was that you can cut around this um, and you can tear it, but if you want to tear it, then um, chances are you are going to tear into this uh, shape here and that's not what you want. So what you can do is you can take a wet brush and trace the shape you want to tear out. And then you can tear the paper and it will tear along that wet um, line. So you can be a little bit more precise. And then if you want to glue that, let's take another brush. Taking the gel medium. And then I'm going to put gel medium over here. So I'm brushing it onto the paper where I want to stick this. And then I'm sticking this down. Is this the right way? I hope so. And then I usually don't brush over this immediately. But I make sure that it's that there's matte medium underneath and then I go over it. Sometimes it's best to wait a little bit longer because then the chances of the tissue paper tearing are slimmer. As you can see, now the white of the tissue paper has almost disappeared. 
And once this is dry, um, I think it will be better, even better, because I don't know if I have, um, so in here I have, I think it's in here, yeah. So in, a, in here I have some um, uh, text that I transferred with the gel printing plate onto um, white tissue paper. And as you can see, it's almost transparent. And this part was also printed on tissue paper with the gel printing plate. Um, and you can't see where the background begins and where the tissue paper um, is. So um, yeah, the, the white tissue paper blends into the background. Here is another example. This is a piece of white tissue paper. Oh, that's not in focus. <laughs> this is a piece of white tissue paper that I printed with Punchinella. And then I pasted it over um, a piece of paper that's on here, um, over here. Um, and you can't really see that I pasted over it. This again, piece of tissue paper that I tore. You can see the, the tear um, line here, but you can't see that it's, it's like I printed it on top, but actually it's um, pasted on top, if that makes sense. So it's nine o'clock. Are there any more questions? No, I think we're no? all just loving watching oh. all of this. I'm, I'm sorry that I did not get a chance to make something because this is incomplete. But here's another look at the um, at the uh, examples I made uh, beforehand. Um, so this is a little landscape and this is just a mishmash of all kinds of um, pieces of um, uh, rice paper and uh, deli paper and tissue paper. And then this is like a little scene this is an abstract that I just learned that it's called an abstract. You can make something like this. This would be really nice on a card, a Christmas card or even just a birthday card, I think. Um, and this is another abstract. And you can do all kinds of things. You can uh, do um, like the art journal pages that I did like this. And there was another one here. Oh, this one is not finished, but there are pieces of um, collage tissue paper all over the place. I, I use them in my art journaling all the time. And I usually just use small pieces, but I also sometimes do stuff like this. A little cactus. I think there's another one. So it's really fun. You can use it uh, for all types of things. You can create cards, art journal pages, um, little gift toppers, even like the cactuses could be really nice. Um, so yeah, that's that's just a couple of ideas. Um, Debbie. Um, could you change over to um, my face? Thank you. Um, so I want to thank you for coming. Um, thanks, Michaels, for having us. Um, and I want to tell you about the next Zoom class, um, which is on the 14th of December uh, with uh, Brigitte Coxon. And she's going to be making 3D stars. And you can already sign up for that. Um, it's in um, michaels.com slash online classes. And then you 
I have to scroll down a bit, but, um, but you can already sign up for that. And then uh, we have a Facebook Live tomorrow on the Jelly Arts Facebook page. Um, it's at 3 p.m. Eastern time. And that one is with Tanya. And I'm not sure what she's going to do, but I'm sure it's going to be fun. Um, so I hope to see you there. And um, what else? Yeah, um, if you want to know more about events that are coming up uh, for Jelly Arts, then you should go to Jelly Arts, the Jelly Arts blog and then check out the event tab because there are more classes coming up in January, but you can't register for them yet. So um, keep an eye on the events tab and um, you'll be able to sign up once um, it's on the Michael's website. Um, yeah, that's it from me. So thank you so, so much for coming. Um, have a wonderful December and uh, until next time. Bye.